Now that we're four races down in 2019, I think it's clear to see where all the teams are doing well and where they're also struggling. As for some teams, their cars have really been showing up at certain tracks. And those teams, of course, like Ferrari and Renault, have to improve. And in today's video, I'm going to look at every single team on the grid and look at where they have to improve for the rest of 2019. If they are to go on to have a successful season. So to find out where all the teams have to improve, make sure to check out this video. Let's first start off with the world champions Mercedes and after four consecutive 1-2 finishes, they don't need to really improve that much because they've been so so good. All they have to do really is maintain the type of performance advantage they have had over Ferrari and Red Bull and if they can do that then they're going to win plenty of races in 2019 and really dominate the season. So now swiftly moving on to Ferrari who have had a difficult start to 2019. Now their big two issues that they have in their car are for one the aerodynamic grip in medium to slow speed corners mostly I think coming from the front wing. They have to sort this out because if they don't it will continue to cost them at tracks for example like Hungary or you know technical tracks like Cota or even Mexico it's gonna really hurt them where slow speed corners come up on the calendar but it looks as though their biggest issue is tires and getting the tires in the right window they struggled a lot in Baku when it came to that certain issue now if they can bring certain upgrades that can improve that, maybe they can pace-wise get more out of their car and get closer to Mercedes. But I don't think even if they do, they're going to massively improve. But those are really the two issues that are holding back Ferrari right now. And I think it's pretty clear to see. Even if they fix those two issues though, I don't think they're going to be winning races left, right and centre. Next up is Red Bull Racing, who have also not had the best start to 2019, even though I don't think it has been that bad. Now, the only real, again, two issues similar to Ferrari are aerodynamic grip, but in a different area to Ferrari. With Red Bull, they have to sort out an unstable uh, rear end of the car, which has affected Pierre Gasly's results, and I think has affected the team in terms of the type of results that they maybe could have got in the first four races but like Ferrari they have also struggled with the tyres and getting the tyres into the right window. Just think back to the Bahrain Grand Prix where on the softer compound tyres they just couldn't get the tyres working for them and that's why they weren't that quick in Bahrain. If they can sort out these issues I think Red Bull will definitely be a lot more competitive compared to, say, Ferrari. I don't think Red Bull, even if they do progress their car forward in terms of upgrades at the Spanish Grand Prix by a tenth or two, I don't think they're going to be amazing in Spain or for the rest of 2019. It will take time. But if they can limit those issues and start to figure out those issues from the Spanish Grand Prix on, I think Red Bull could be building what is going on to be, I think, a, a good 2019 for them and also their new partners, Honda. But now let's go on to the midfield, starting off with Renault, who have not had a good start to 2019. The only race this season they were actually that good was in Shanghai, where they qualified on the fourth row and finished in P7 with Daniel Ricciardo. Now, at the other three races, their car just wasn't that quick. And I think that comes down to their car fundamentally lacking real, you know, good aerodynamic grip. They just don't have enough grip in that car to seriously be dominating the front of the midfield like they should be. Their car just doesn't look spectacular. I said that after going to testing. After going to the Spanish Grand Prix track in Catalonia, their car just doesn't look to be that great. It doesn't look like it has an absolute ton of grip. 
So they do have to really progress their car forward in all areas aerodynamically because it just doesn't look that good of a car right now and they cannot continue to have the car they currently do have. But another issue they have to sort out, of course, is reliability. Now, when it comes to power, let's forget that because Renault are never, it seems, they're going to design a good power unit in these current V6 hybrid rules. But when it comes to reliability, even though this is also an area Renault have struggled with, they've got to start making sure, especially for their works team, that this is sorted out because they have lost quite a big amount of points through reliability issues. Just think back to Bahrain. So they've got to sort their car out because their car has never really looked that quick and it hasn't really been that good of a start to 2019. And if they don't really make massive progress from the Spanish Grand Prix on, this season really could go down for Renault as a failure. Next up is McLaren, who have had a good start to 2019, but they can do better. Because even though in Bahrain and Baku they were good and they had a very quick car, in Melbourne and Shanghai, tracks where you have to have, say, more aerodynamic grip, they didn't look that great. And I think that's what the car is lacking now, is really good aerodynamic grip compared to say their midfield rivals i think the car aerodynamically is decent but it's nothing special and i think also their car at the moment is better suited to tracks where you don't need to have a ton of downforce like bahrain and baku so i think just adding more downforce to their car will help their performance at all tracks not just tracks where you have to be good in a straight line like they were in Bahrain and Baku. They were good at Bahrain and Baku because I think they have sorted out their high drag issues from 2018. So that's good. But I think aerodynamically, they do need to step it up if they want to really maintain P4 and the constructors because with teams like Renault, Racing Point and Alfa Romeo right behind them, that's going to be tough to do if they don't improve their car. Now let's go on to Alfa Romeo, who have had a good start to 2019, especially with Kimi Raikkonen, who has been fantastic in the Alfa. Uh, but the car hasn't been maybe as good as the team were hoping for the first four races, and I definitely think there's more to come from Alfa Romeo. If they can sort out what for me is a real lack of aerodynamic grip especially at the rear of the car then i think they really can take a stronghold on fourth in the constructors because i think that's what alpha's aim for 2019 is if they can sort out that area of the car then with kimi raikkonen being as good as he is and if antonio giovinazzi improves like he did in baku and keeps that up at a consistent basis Alpha could really take P4 on the constructors. So if they can sort out those rear end issues and they can improve at tracks where you need higher aerodynamic grip, where Alpha have struggled more so this season, then I think they can really take the fight to whoever else is going to compete for P4 on the constructors. But I think if their car and what is good and not so good about it remains past the Spanish Grand Prix, then at tracks like the Circuit de Catalunya, Monaco, Hungary, Singapore, because they don't have that great amount of rear end grip, I don't think they're gonna have really good enough races at those tracks where you desperately do need a good amount of points. Let's now go on to the other Ferrari powered customer team, Haas, who, have had a, a difficult start to 2019. Australia was good, but the three races after that have not been good at all. Now, I think it's pretty simple to really identify where the, the Haas car has to improve, and that comes down to tyres. They have to deal with the tyres better in terms of getting them into the right operating window, but also, when it comes to the races, they have to find a better way of 
making them not wear out as quickly as they are because they have the worst tie wear right now in Formula One. And in that midfield where things are so, so close, so, so tight, they cannot afford to have that weakness, especially in the race where, of course, the points are scored. So it all comes down to ties for Haas. I don't think this will be a quick fix because fixing issues with tyres is not something you can fix right away. So it will take time, but as long as they can make progress in that area, then that's a start because if they continue with the bad tyre wear and the lack of temperature they seem to have in their tyres at times, pass, then they are not going to finish fourth in the constructors or even finish close to that by the end of 2019. Now we'll go on to Toro Rosso, who have had, I think, a pretty good start to 2019 compared to, say, the start of 2018. Their car seems to be good, but maybe not as good as it could be. Now, I think also like Haas, not as bad as Haas, but also like Haas, their issues comes down to tyres, because in qualifying, not all the time, but most of the time so far, they haven't quite got the lap that they've really been expecting to get. And I think that comes down to not getting, again, the tyres into the right operating window, which so far in 2019, for all the teams, seems to be a very, very important thing to do. So they've got to improve that. But I think in the races, they also need to find some real consistency with their car because if you go back to Baku Danny Kvyat was destroying his tyres and Albon wasn't really having the best of time with his tyres and at other races such as Bahrain their tyres haven't been consistent in terms of good grip throughout the Grand Prix so I think like Haas if they can just get a hold of the tyres there's definitely a lot more pace in that Toro Rosso car. And let's now finally go on to a racing point who have had, considering their car is underdeveloped, they have had a good start to 2019, scoring points in every race so far and are currently P5 in the Constructors, a good start to 2019. But for them, all they have to do essentially is catch up in terms of development with teams like Renault, Alfa Romeo, McLaren, Haas and Toro Rosso to have a successful 2019 because with the car they've had in the first four races, they've done very, very well. And again, if they can just catch up in terms of development, then I think 2019 could be a year where this team, who were of course previously Force India, this could be the year where they reclaim P4 on the constructors. And with the way 2019 has gone so far, I could honestly see them doing it because they have been very, very good with the lack of pace their car at times has had. And that is it, of course, for all the teams. Actually, no, there's one more team. It starts with a W, ends in an S. No, it's not Wankers, it's Williams. Uh, Williams, their car is absolutely terrible. We know this. It will take them four to five years to fix this car. Never mind four to five months. This car is terrible. This team is terrible. They have to start focusing on 2020. 2019 is a complete write-off. But going ahead for the rest of 2019, this is what I think all the teams have to do if they are going to improve and have a successful season. Now, of course, all the teams are not going to do that. Some teams will continue to have the issues that they have had so far. But I think some teams will fix these issues and go on to have a good 2019. And it sure as hell will be interesting to see who steals a march in terms of development and also who does really improve their car as the season goes on. But let me know in the comments, guys, do you agree with what I've had to say? Let me know in the comments and also let me know in the comments what you thought of my opinion as to the issues all the teams have. And as ever, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button for more content like this. 
But until the 2019 Spanish Grand Prix weekend this weekend on the channel, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.